Check this out. Oh, ho, ho, look at that. Hello everybody, Silver Picker here and welcome to the Silver Picker Squad. Now, today's video is one that I am beyond excited about and there is good reason for that. First off, I am opening this. I just got this grab bag in the mail and it is from the most reputable and amazing grab bag seller on eBay. I've bought from them a number of times in the past and I have never gone wrong with them. They are fantastic and I'll share their information with you at the end of the video. But if you also want to see last week's video where I opened up an amazing grab bag from them, you can check it out in the card right here. But this grab bag is not the most exciting thing about this video. Of course we're going to open it up and see all the awesome coins inside. but. It is not an ordinary grab bag. It is a grab bag that I paid $100 for and will be used in an epic showdown against two of my favorite numismatic YouTubers on the platform. And they are, of course, Silver Seeker and Rob Finds Treasure. So that's right, this is a three-way collaboration showdown of epic proportions where we have each bought a $100 coin grab bag from the same seller and we're gonna open them up and see who got the best deal. So, before you even continue watching this video, I want you to pause the video, I want you to open up their videos and their channels in another tab. Come on, I don't want you to X out of my video, but I want you to open up their channels in another tab and hit that big old red subscribe button. Now, if you're watching and you have not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? It's time! The time has come! There is awesome stuff to learn and to see and to enjoy on this channel and follow my mission of informing, educating, and entertaining people all about coin collecting, precious metal stacking, and even personal finance. How to make a little bit of extra money on your own terms. So stay tuned for lots more great stuff from my channel. Check out Silver Seeker and Rob Fine's Treasures channel and let's watch me whoop their butts in this epic challenge. Let's go. All right, today we've got the Leatherman, and I already took out the outer packaging, so there's just a little bit here to open up. Cuts like butter. I know you guys make fun of me for having dull knives, but this one is a good one, and let's see what we got. Oh, boy. Oh yeah, I can already see how there's good stuff in here. Oh yeah, check this out. It looks like we got another themed one, World War II. Can you see that? This is going to be so interesting, I can tell. I can smell it, this is gonna be a good one. But if you're new to this channel, basically we're gonna open up this grab bag, see what all the coins are inside, see what all the bills are, see what all the other cool stuff is, and we're going to track the value right over here. So you saw that I paid 100 bucks for it, and we're gonna see how much this grab bag is actually worth. So let's crack into the first little bit. Let's take it out of this plastic hole Holder, get rid of that and we've got the wow nice I can feel so much stuff in here we're gonna get to this in a second but let's start with some of this stuff over here first I mean this is there is tons of stuff here so let's grab a little from here we'll go back to there we'll do a little bit of each and see what we got so let's start with this all right what is this okay clearly it's some mail let's see what we got over here okay it's got a little bit of info Three 1942 dated letters from Swiss to U.S. opened by censors and examined and sealed in World War II. That is so cool. So basically, any mail that came into the United States during World War II was subject to being checked by these censors. So you can see this was opened by uh, examiner 6179, 4389, etc. And these were letters that were sent from Europe to the United States, and they were all checked by these examiners to make sure that nothing dangerous was coming in from Europe. These are definitely, definitely an amazing sort of add-on to any coin collector that's interested in the history. All right, sticking with this mail theme, let's take a look at this. This is what's called a first day of issue stamp set. And these, let's take it out of the plastic so that you can get rid of the glare a little bit. But these are basically envelopes that were produced by the United States Postal Service for collectors on the first day that these individual stamps were issued. These, of course, were from 1993, but they are commemorating events during World War II. So this is World War II, 1943, turning of the tide. That is really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. And the stamp, of course, which is the main feature, is really interesting, 29 cents. We've got US Medical Service, Saving Lives, also first day of issue. 
and of course, finally, commemorating World War II 1944 Road to Victory. And this one has two different stamps. I'm not a huge stamp collector, but my dad is into stamps, so I might even give these to him. Now, I know you guys are going to kill me if I don't get to the coins in this coin grab bag soon, so let's get rid of this little thing. Let's see what this is. Ah, yes, yeah, so this is one of those obsolete coinage sets made for sort of new collectors, and these are World War II obsolete coins, and you see here we've got two silver war nickels, so always keep an eye out for these when you're looking through your nickels. You can tell what a war nickel is because the mint mark is actually above Monticello in a sort of big letter over there as opposed to the smaller ones, which are not silver. So we've got four different war nickels. We've got 1942, 43, 44, and 45. And we've got wheat cents from the war years. Now, of course, the 1943 is made out of steel because they needed the copper for the war effort. But here it says that these are shell case cents. So I'm wondering, does that mean that they actually made the 1944, 45, and 46 out of recycled shell casings? That I've actually never heard. I've got to look into that. But in any case, this is not worth too much, but still, silver is silver, and it's a nice little display that I might give to a young numismatist or a new collector that might enjoy it. All right, so next up in the bag, ooh, look at this. We have some Japanese occupational currency from World War II. Now, I've gotten these in the past. Actually, I've gotten ones in better condition than this. This one's in pretty ratty shape, but this is super interesting. Whoa, okay, we've got to take a look more in depth at this. Let's take this out of the plastic so we get rid of the glare. It's really delicate because it is falling apart. This is cool. The Japanese government, 10 pesos. I believe that these were used in the Philippines during World War II, during the Japanese occupation. Look at that. So this is kind of falling apart, but it's still a really, really cool piece of history. This is super interesting. I have never seen anything like this before, actually. So I'm going to need your guys' help explaining to me a little bit more about this history. So this is, it looks like, Tien Golden, which is the Dutch currency from the Netherlands, right? But it says the Japanese government in Dutch, and it's got this beautiful banana tree design in the background. It's actually a, quite a sharp bill, but I've never seen anything like this because I didn't realize that the Japanese actually had anything to do outside of the Pacific theater. So that is really unusual, really interesting. If any of you history buffs know a little bit more about the origin of this note, please put it in the comments below. I'd like to find out, and I'm sure my other viewers would too. Well, this is certainly unusual. So it's the same design as the one written in Dutch. It has the banana tree, it's a different color, but this one's in English. It says the Japanese government, $10. Now that is very unusual because I'm not sure what these were intended for. I mean, one's in Dutch and one's in English, same design, same Japanese government. I have got to find out what the deal is on this because this is super interesting. I mean, was this intending for when the Japanese would like invade the United States or invade Europe? All right, next up in the bag. Ooh, look at this. This is like military regalia from World War II. I mean, I'm pretty sure that this is American, but I have no military background, so I don't really know what this stuff actually symbolizes. I mean, I believe that each of these was awarded to a soldier, depending on the campaigns that they fought in, or if they did anything unusual or exemplary during their service. And this looks like some kind of unit patch. Does anybody know what this patch is or what this stuff is. I mean, I have some of these from my grandfather who fought in World War II, but uh, I don't even know what any of those actually mean. So I would love to find out. See, that's the cool thing about getting grab bags from this seller. You don't only get coins. You get all sorts of other really interesting historical pieces. All right, next up is a victory songbook for soldiers, sailors, and marines. That is really cool. Look at that. Victory songbook. See what's inside. Wow, 93 patriotic and popular song favorites for the community singing in camps, recreational groups, schools, and the homes. This is from 1942. So this was issued during the war for 25 cents. Can't get anything for 25 cents anymore. And it has lots and lots of different songs. I guess uh, America, American Pride song. Wow, cool, a little newspaper clipping as well. My mom is a, an excellent musician, so I will be giving this book to her. Another thing, this was right behind it in the bag. Look at that. Protection from the atomic bomb. Civil Defense Agency, Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Wow. This is unreal. Okay, I'm definitely holding on to this. I don't care that this is not numismatic, but the history behind this is just unreal. Look at that. Back in the day, they thought that you were going to be able to survive this. If you see a flash of light brighter than the sun, don't run. There isn't time. Fall flat on your face. Get down fast. 
Oh man, this is just too much. I mean, tell me if you guys like the historical stuff too. I mean, I know you guys are watching for the coins and the banknotes and all that stuff, but this historical stuff that they include really just adds so much to this for me. I would love it if you guys would let me know if you like it as well. All right, we still have a ridiculous amount of coins and some banknotes and also some other stuff as well. So let's go straight into the bag, just pull something out, see what we got. Okay, this is, ooh, World War II Great Britain silver, very cool. Check this out, oh yeah, look at that. We got two silver coins, I believe those are King George portrayed on these coins, and these are British silver coins. And since they're from the war era, this one is a sixpence from 1943. And this is a one shilling coin from 1944. I believe these are 50% silver. So British coins are a great way for a new silver stacker to get some awesome, historically interesting coins that have silver in them, but at a lower price point because they only have 50% silver, unlike their US counterparts from the same era, which had 90% silver. Now, in addition to our war nickels, we are on the board for silver. Nice. All right, what is this? It looks like Aloha, Army and Navy YMCA. It's got some U.S. savings bond stamps from Hawaii, 1940, so before uh, Pearl Harbor. Um, but, oh, wow, look at this. USS Yorktown. USS Yorktown. These are letters that were sent to or from the USS Yorktown. USS Yorktown was an incredible, uh, I believe, aircraft carrier from World War II that was not involved in Pearl Harbor, but played an important role in the Battle of Midway. I mean, I'm a little bit of a uh, history nerd, so I do recognize some of these names. I don't know all the details about it. But that is so cool. I assume that's why these were included. Man, so unlike a lot of the grab eggs I've done in the past, this one really does have a lot of uh, exonumia or non-coin related stuff. But I mean, I'm okay with that. This stuff is super awesome. All right, next up in the grab bag, we're still chock full of coins. We've got World War II Australia silver. Wow. I mean, this is so cool. I, this theme is incredible because I am such a history buff, especially when it comes to World War II. All right, we got a little note. Let's take a look at the coins. That's what we're really after. This is the uncirculated threepence, or threepence, as they'd say in the UK. This is from Australia, of course. That is cool. It looks like there's three wheat stalks in the center of 1942, and it looks like we've got King George again on the obverse. I think these are also 50% silver, but I'll have to double check. And the reverses on these are so, so beautiful. I mean, look at that. It's not just a normal, ordinary crest like in a lot of other countries because it is flanked by an emu and a kangaroo. Actually, that's an ostrich, not an emu. But in any case, still really cool. And here we have what looks like a ram or a buffalo on the shilling piece. I mean, look at all this. This is getting incredible. I mean, look at the silver. Okay, next up in the bag, we've got... World War II, France, Australia, and Sweden. Okay, all sorts of stuff in here. Some silver it looks like, some not silver. Let's get these guys out. We have a gorgeous Australian penny. Now, I love the large British Empire large pennies. 1942, this one has, of course, the kangaroo on it, as well as King George. These are three French coins from World War II, and I believe that these are from occupied France, meaning the German Nazi government uh, that occupied France and took over. I believe these are coins associated with that. These are all made out of aluminum. They're extremely light, and that's because heavier metals were more important for the war effort, uh, for guns and for artillery and for boats and ships and all sorts of other stuff, tanks. So they had to make the coins out of this much lighter and uh, less valuable men metal. We have a 10 ore from 1945 from Sweden. And these are really, really common. I've gotten these many, many times. This one's kind of ugly. It's got this black line through it. But I've gotten these many, many times. They are indeed silver. They're very small. So they're very accessible to new collectors who just want to get some silver in their collection. Okay, we've got some really great stuff already. I cannot wait. Let's see what else we got. This is legit. Look at that. This is one of the best conditioned half dollars from this era that I have. This is a Walking Liberty half dollar US, and it's also got a really, really nice conditioned 
mercury dime as well. Would you look at that? I mean, it's not uncirculated, it's certainly not BU, but it still has a nice amount of mint luster. It's a 1942D, you can see the mint mark right over there. And this, wow! I almost wish I pulled this out of the bag last because this is just so spectacular. This is in excellent, excellent condition. It's not mint state, of course, but this has got to be at least XF. It's got an S mint mark, 1941S. During the war years, this is what American coins looked like during World War II. Some more Japanese occupational currency from Malaysia, Netherlands, Indies, and Philippines. So I guess it's Dutch West Indies. That's, that makes more sense than uh, an invasion of, net, of the Netherlands itself. We've got the 10 centavos. This one is from the Philippines. We've got one dollar. According to the label here, this one's from Malaysia. Dutch West Indies. And it's a different design, of course, than the other one, which was the 10. This is the one. And finally, the five golden. These are so cool. You can see that they made the backs way, way, way less ornate than the fronts. I have a feeling that that was a cost saving and uh, sort of speed related decision. Back into the bag we go. I guess we might as well go with this last bank note over here. Philippine National Bank, emergency circulating note of 1942 issued by the authority of the President of the Philippines. That is super cool. This looks like almost like it was actually stamped. This doesn't look like it was printed like a normal bill. This looks like it was actually used by like a rubber stamp. I have never seen anything like this. I honestly think this is like a rubber stamp that made this bill. This is special. This is special. I'm going to keep this in my personal collection. This is too cool. Back into the bag we go. Pull out another sort of flat item. American Coin Treasures Genuine Coin Collection. So we've got World War II Penny Collection. You know, these type of things, I don't know exactly who produces all of them. Uh, this one's produced by, I guess, UPM. But basically what they do is they get really common circulated coins. They put them in a nice case with kind of a cool souvenir background. Maybe put a little bit of info about the coins like this. And then they sell them at a huge markup. You should never, ever, ever buy these type of coins in this kind of holder for a retail value. You should buy these if you see them at a garage sale or at a coin store or whatever, because this is really only worth what the coins are worth themselves. So only buy the coins, not the holder, right? So these coins are worth at most five cents a piece. So this is five, 10, 15, 20, 25 cents, and that's being generous, right? So 25 cents for this thing, this thing probably retailed for five bucks. So let that be a lesson to you, all right? This is nuts. There are still so many coins in here. This is still kind of heavy and like we're doing incredibly well. I mean, Rob and Silver Seeker, I'm sorry guys, but uh, there's no way I'm losing this contest. But anyway, in almost in every single one of the grab bags that I've bought from this seller, they always have a roll of wheat cents. And it's not unsearched, but it's a selection of coins throughout the years that they were produced. And uh, it's going to take too long to go through each one of these in this video. So actually, I'm going to make a separate video uh, for my patrons, actually. This will be a Patreon exclusive where I will go through this in finer detail. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, uh, now's the time. You'll get a chance to see what's inside this roll. So anyway, this is awesome and I can't wait to crack into that. Next up, let's see what else we got in here. World War II World Silver Coins. Oh boy. This is awesome. This is cool. I bet there's gonna be some unusual stuff in here. Oh boy. Oh boy. We got five silver coins in here. Come on. The generosity and the fairness that these guys at Main Street Rare Coins show with their grab bags is just unparalleled. Absolutely unparalleled. Wow, this is a quarter golden from Curacao. Curacao is in the Caribbean and it is an island that uh, is a sort of protectorate, I believe, of the Netherlands. I've actually been there. It's an incredibly cool place. Highly recommend you visit. But now I have a silver coin from there. Really, really cool. We've got 25 cents from 1944 from the Netherlands. So this is a mainland Dutch coin from the war era. It's got some damage on it, but hey, that's all right. Silver, silver, right? Next is this nice, wow, very cool. This is New Zealand. I had no idea. I was expecting this to be another British coin. I was kind of surprised it was in here. I don't think I've ever had a silver New Zealand coin. That is incredible. Look at that. I wonder what kind of bird that is. Anybody who knows what kind of bird that is, put it in the comments below. Let us all uh, learn a thing or two. Next up, oh, I can already tell. This is from the Philippines. I believe, the, I believe these were produced by the United States. It says United States of America, 1944. So when the US occupied the Philippines, they produced the coins and the bills. 
Look at that. That's a really nice silver coin. Last but not least, we've got Columbia from 1948. I mean, I guess that's technically after the war, but I'm not gonna complain about a silver coin, am I? Next up is this 1944 wedding card. Oh wow, that is not expected. We've got a bell there, little wedding bells. Very cool, ah, and check that out, 1944. Anything else? Don't think it's worth anything. Okay, back into the bag we go. Very cool, these look like cross, so I guess this is from a medic, that's my guess. This is from a medic in World War II. I'm gonna guess that these are American, though I don't really have any indication of that. So if any military experts in the squad can help identify this and any of the other military stuff, would definitely appreciate it. Back into the bag. Another military pin, I feel. Wow, this looks brand new. This looks like it didn't see any age. It is not silver, it says GI on the back. I guess, does that mean it's army? Back into the bag again, and it feels like we've got two more pouches of coins. Let's see, let's take them both out. Yeah, we're empty now. Great Britain World War II copper and brass, very cool. And, whoa, World War II Nazi Germany. That's a heavy one. We will save that one for last. Great Britain World War II copper and brass. As I've already said before, I do love these large British pennies. This is a 1940. Next, I believe this is a threepence. Yep, we've got ourselves a 1943 British threepence. This is when they made them out of brass instead of silver. Also King George. And last but not least, 1944 half penny. It's got a little rim ding over there. This one has some uh, some color discoloration as well. Not really worth anything, but still a nice little piece of history. All right, and before we get to those Nazi coins, let's take a look at this last set of mail. So it looks like this is similar to what we saw at the beginning of the video, but instead, up, uh, yep. Censored mail from Central America in 1940s. That's cool. This looks like it was sent from Panama to New York. That's interesting. Still read by the censor. Next, we've got Haiti. That's really cool. This one also looks like Port-au-Prince Haiti. And last but not least, we've got the Dominican Republic. And last off, we have the World War II Nazi Germany coins. Now, this is gonna be heavy. These are stark reminders of the evil that humanity is capable of. Germany in World War II was of the most evil, cruel, and sadistic regimes ever to be on the face of this earth. And it is an important reminder here that I have right in my hands right now of letting this never ever happen again to anybody. Look at that. This is, I mean, these are, are terrifying coins. These coins are symbols of an evil ideology that killed millions and millions and millions of men, women, children, Infants, 1939, 1939, 1943, and 1941. None of these are silver, of course, but these are a very, very unusual set of coins. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys appreciate them in the appropriate way. So, look at all of this splendor. Look at these treasures. This is by far the coolest grab bag that I've opened thus far. It's maybe not necessarily the most valuable one, but it is absolutely my favorite. I am obsessed with World War II era history, so I am so happy that Main Street Rare Coins in Jewett City, Connecticut put this grab bag together for me. It was, ah, uh, not too shabby at all. I may say so myself. Not too shabby at all. You saw the numbers, you saw how I did. Not a bad way to spend a hundred bucks, am I right? I'm pretty confident that I will retain the title of Grab Bag King, which of course I just gave to myself, but I am confident that I will retain it and that neither Silver Seeker nor Rob Fine's treasure will unseat me from my throne. But, just to be sure, maybe you should check out their videos as well. They're down in the description, Check out their videos, subscribe to their channels, show them some love. Rob Fine's treasure is on his way to 100,000 subs, and Silver Seeker is on his way to 25,000. Come on, Silver Picker Squad, help him get there. And if you are watching this video, and you enjoyed it, and you have not yet hit the subscribe button on my channel, come on, hit the subscribe button. But if you want a more concrete way to support my channel and my mission of informing, educating, and entertaining people all about coin collecting, precious metal stacking, and personal finance, well, you can cop some merch like this awesome coffee mug with the Galaxy Morgan design. Check that out. That's right, I'm sipping my victory tea out of this. 
that is hot. And it is hot just like this hot pink, but you can get it in dozens of other awesome colors. You can get a t-shirt, a tote bag, a hoodie, all sorts of cool stuff. It's inexpensive, it's a cool way to express your inner numismatist and support my channel. But you can also support my mission by supporting my Patreon campaign. You can join the dozens of other patrons who have given a couple bucks a month to support my work and in return, you get to join my exclusive Discord server, which is basically this amazing chat room, private with just me and the other patrons to talk about coin collecting, precious metal stacking, strategies, and even sharing precious metals like gold and silver deals. You don't want to miss it. I would love to see you there. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big like, share it with your friends, and of course, hit that big old red subscribe button. I got a lot more awesome stuff coming down the pike, so stay tuned, and until next time, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. Thank you so much for your incredible support. And an extra special welcome to my first gold patron, John Atias. Thank you so much. It's been great getting to know you in the Discord. Can't wait to get to know you even more. Looking forward to seeing you all there.